Welcome my friends, Seven Gray here. Thank you for joining me for this episode. Today I want to give you an update, let you know how my renowned cargo trailer is doing after one year. So let's roll the intro and get into it. This video is sponsored by Renowned Cargo Trailers. A year ago, I purchased the cargo trailer back here from Renowned uh, Cargo Trailers out in Georgia. I drove up there from Florida to do the purchase. I'll link the video above. So I've owned this for about a year, and so I just want to go through uh, my experience, how the cargo trailer is doing, and seven things that I would do differently knowing what I know now about the cargo trailer and perhaps this will help you if you're considering purchasing a cargo trailer or if you own one. So after a year, how's the trailer doing that I purchased from Renown? I would say fantastic. I would give it a 10 of 10 for cargo trailers or yeah, I would say 10 of 10. Um, the construction is great. Everything like the frame, the wheels, axles, the tongue, the towing ability, uh, construction, everything is just superb on this particular trailer. Um, if you're using it for lawnmowers and motorcycles and things like that. Um, so obviously I'm using this trailer in a way that it was not really intended to be used as far as the way the trailer was originally designed. Certainly can be used the way I'm using it, but that's not its actual intent. So let me explain what I mean by that. So let's talk about the side of the trailer. This is the first point, is dealing with uh, the construction here on the side for a living space. Now this is absolutely perfect for lawnmowers, uh, motorcycles, and towing, I don't know, like a moving uh, van or something like that. Uh, you have sheets of aluminum, they're about three feet wide in each particular section, and then they're screwed into the metal studs on the side. And this is uh, made so that the the overlap is from front to back, so the gap is on the back side. Now Renown is pretty good in their construction. Um, they work with Rock Solid as the actual manufacturer. The back side of this where they touch actually has a um, inset groove on the outer layer so that any water coming in from the wrong direction will naturally hit that as it's dripping down and it becomes a drip point so it drips down this seam on the inside before it gets to the actual inside and falls uh, down to the bottom. So it works as a stop gap for moisture that's coming in from the wrong direction. That works well for situations like rain and things like that. What it doesn't do is keep air from blowing in that side. So if you have a parked in a windstorm and the wind is coming in from the back direction, that wind will go right through each of these gaps. Let me do a close up and show you. So there's a number of uh, gaps here uh, right between the screws. And so I went and counted these at one point and I found almost 20 of these gaps, uh, some of them more significant than others. Here you can see a large one. This is not nearly as critical because it's below the floor line on the inside. Here's another one uh, that's a little bit wider. So why is this important for these little gaps? If you're parked in a windstorm like I have been for a number of days and the wind is blowing from the back of the trailer, it's going to go right through those gaps. And there's two things that happen with that. One and it's a little strange, it's a little bit like one of those kazoos, uh, the tiny little instruments that you hold up to your lips as a kid that makes this uh, buzzing sound like something like that. I know that's probably highly amusing to all of you, except that it's a lower tone for the cargo trailer. It's more like a something like that. And you have this buzzing noise that goes on as long as the wind is blowing and it sort of goes in um, it bursts like that as the gusts of wind come past. And there's three points right now on my trailer, one on the front and one on each of the walls, where the wind, if it hits it just right, make that sort of moaning buzz noise. And it's pretty annoying. And so the second factor, of course, is the, um, the wind that's going inside. Now, I have insulation on the inside, which are poly-iso 
uh, sheet panels. So that's blocking that with a air and water seal on the inside. But I think that it would be a great advantage. And so I think it would probably be a significant advantage if prior to putting in your polyiso insulation or whatever insulation you have on the inside to close those gaps. And I'm not sure exactly what the solution is. Maybe it's some sort of caulk or sealant that would go in those holes. Maybe it's increasing the number of rivets. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I suspect that renowned cargo trailer and rock solid probably have a great solution for this. And so contacting them prior to your purchase and when you're working with them in the purchasing process, I would bring that up and talk to them and see what solutions they have in mind. And it would probably be worth paying a little bit more to have that done. Or after you purchase it, before you install your uh, foam panels for your insulation to implement some sort of sealant in there. I don't know what that is. Maybe you can write in the comments below your suggestions or things that you are aware of for that particular thing. So that would be point number one. Point number two, I would say talk to your salesperson. I bought my trailer from Renowned Cargo Trailers, had a great experience, uh, and I wish, so this is the thing that I wish I would have done differently. I wish I would have listened to the salesman instead of thinking that I knew more than them. And there's another factor that comes into play that I can talk about now. When I purchased this particular trailer, I came from a background of owning a step van. So my step van was all aluminum construction and it had an all aluminum single piece of metal for the roof, for the ceiling on the entire van. So when I purchased the cargo trailer, they had a couple of different options. They had a single contiguous sheet of metal aluminum that goes on the roof. That's what I opted for. As soon as I ordered that and you know, put it in as my request, the salesperson said, I don't think you really want to do that. And he said uh, his recommendation was to do a roof that was in, I think it was four foot sections, four foot wide sheets. And each sheet where it touched the other sheet was folded in onto itself instead of riveted like the sides or screwed in where they just overlap. Instead of just two sheets touching each other on the top of each other, they were folded into each other so they were locked for a perfect water seal. I didn't want to do that. I thought it was too much potential to uh get roof leaks up there as you would have a giant seam every four feet so i opted for the single sheet of aluminum so that sounds all good and well for a water seal but the reason that the salesperson was suggesting going the other route is the thickness of the metal the thickness of the metal that I have is very, very thin. It's thicker than aluminum foil, but it is really, really thin. I'm going to look it up and I'll write you know, down in the text of the bottom of this video here uh, the thickness that I went with with the single contiguous versus if you would have gone with this folded metal, it was considerably thicker. I'm not sure what it was, three or four times thicker. Uh, the metal that I have up there is so thin that underneath um, and above the cross struts that support the roof, they have a, sh a sheet of, I guess it's probably masonite or something like that to give it some extra structural support. But it's almost thin enough to where I would be concerned about walking on it. Now I am lucky that I have my roof members spaced apart by one foot. So one foot gives me a lot of extra support and so the thinner metal roof actually works for me except for one situation which I just talked about and that's in the wind. In high wind because the roof doesn't have lots of penetration points to put screws in there. It's flapping up and down. It's so thin that it just slaps up and down and it literally sounds like slapping or crackling noises, you know, for hours during windstorms and rainstorms and things like that. So there's a lot of noise inside the trailer right now. So I think by going with a thicker roof and maybe addressing with Renown 
how to better secure the roof so that it doesn't slap or uh, crackle and pop. Maybe there's some sort of padding they put on the top of the roof struts between that and the metal membrane. Uh, I'm not sure what the solution is there, but uh, it's a little bit of annoyance. And again, for a cargo trailer, hauling um, bikes and motorcycles and lawnmowers, absolutely not a big deal. But if you're in there and camping in it or living in it during a windstorm or rainstorm, probably not ideal. And I think that's something that could be easily remedied. I went inside the cargo trailer here. Um, you can see the wall behind me. This is the insulation that I added. I've got two inches of insulation, one inch going vertical up and down in between the metal support struts on the walls and then an extra inch that goes horizontal side to side which is what you're seeing here and that's an extra added layer that i put in so i have a lot of extra insulation one thing i do think that i probably would have talked to renowned cargo trailer about and i wish i would have done better and i wish i would have done differently would be to figure out in advance where i'm going to put my windows and having them build this metal structure like you see on the ceiling here um, such that I could insert my windows easily maybe they wouldn't actually cut out the aluminum um, where the hole for the aluminum uh, where the hole for the window would be but if they would at least frame that like adding all the steel structure around the frame of the edge of the window where it's going to be inserted I think that would be a big help here sometime in the next year or so I'm going to have to cut out sections of aluminum siding and go into the steel structure these struts and cut out certain vertical members that go up and down so that the window can fit in and weld in um, ver uh, horizontal and I'll have to weld in horizontal steel tubing to go around where I'm going to put the windows so that's going to be pretty big surgery on the side of the trailer. I think if I knew in advance and did better with my planning and knew where I was going to put my windows and what sizes they were going to be, I can have all of that done by renown in the get-go before I buy the trailer. And so it would be built exactly the way I need to save me all of that pain later. Well, I didn't know where I was going to put the windows exactly. I'm going to put lots of windows in here eventually. Um, I didn't have the time or I didn't take I didn't take the time to plan it out and figure out where I want my windows. So that would be my advice number three is plan in advance exactly where you want your windows, what the sizes are, give those specs to renown so that you can have everything framed out in advance for you. So all you have to do is drop your windows into that space. I think it would save you a lot of effort. And it's also nice to have actual light inside that's coming natural light from sunlight outside as you're moving into your space um, rather than living in a dark box like I've been for most of this last year. The fourth thing I would do differently is regarding the ceiling here. The steel tubing, the cross member supports that are up there on the standard cargo trailer are 16 inches apart, uh, which is true for most trailer builds. Mine, I had built it uh, 12 inches on center, which gives me a lot more strength. The downside is that most ceiling fans like Max fans and the Fantastic fans are made for a 14 inch box hole a square hole that is in the ceiling so it's really difficult to add that after the fact if you only have 12 inches you're trying to put a 14 inch uh, fan in there so uh, that's something to address if you would keep the 12 inch then you would need to have cross members and spaces made in advance from renown and uh, rock solid so that you'd have space for the ceiling fans or you would need to uh, go with 16 inch on the ceiling and go ahead and keep the 12 inch on the walls around the side. So those are some things to think about in ordering your trailer and thinking in advance about uh, installing ceiling fans. 
I stepped outside my trailer here. The fifth thing that I would do differently is have Renown and Rock Solid install stabilizing jacks in the trailer when you buy it rather than doing it after the fact. Uh, I opted to not have those installed and to do it myself later. Here I am a year later and still have not done it. And so it's just one of those things. I think it's easier to knock that out and have them do it for you in advance. So I would recommend going ahead and going with the stabilizing jacks from them from the get-go. Sixth thing I would do differently is I think I would go with a shorter trailer and make it taller. Uh, I didn't realize when I ordered it that there was a lot more options out there that were not even offered on the website. Uh, the customization you can get through Renowned Cargo Trailer is really incredible, but you really need to ask for it. I didn't know that until I picked it up and did the tour of Renowned Cargo Trailer Factory, um, Rock Solid Factory, which I'll link above, that there are almost infinite options of what you can do with your cargo trailer. So um, I think I probably would have gone with a 20-foot trailer on the length instead of 26 feet, and would have gone to maximum ceiling roof height. Uh, legal roof height is 13.6 from the ground to the very top. I would probably do 13 feet, leaving a little bit of room up there for solar and fans and vents and things like that. And then I probably would have done some sort of a loft bedroom like a typical tiny house. And then underneath you would have the bathroom slash kitchen area, something like that. So I would have gone with a little bit shorter trailer and taller to make it easier to maneuver and to tow. It's not terribly bad as it is at 26 feet, but it does take a lot of extra focus and effort if you are driving it. Very last thing, the seventh thing, would be dealing with the door over here. And that is something that I didn't even think about. So the doors actually are lowered down a little bit more with the steps on the inside. So the door starts at the very, very bottom of the skirting instead of where the bottom of the floor is and go up from there. So you have a set of steps that cut into the inside. So I would do this a little differently. Let me show you. This is what the steps look like down here. So there's a little step. I've got a step stool outside. And what I would do instead of putting the bottom of the door down here and then having about six inches before the ceiling height, I would start the door here and go up. And that way this would not be there. And then what I would do is put a set of steps underneath the trailer that would pop out so that the door on the inside would be level with the floor and that would make it way way easier for your build out to not be losing this floor space inside and have your door equal to the bottom of the floor on the inside of the trailer. Hope that makes sense. So that's it. Those are the seven things for cargo trailer a year later that I would do differently if I were ordering it again. Overall, again, from a noun cargo trailer and rock solid, it's been a fabulous trailer, perfect for cargo hauling, and I would say a 9.5 out of 10 for converting into a camper or tiny house space. Uh, just a few things that I think you'd probably want to prep before you start into your building or consider before you get it too far into your build. Uh, that's all I have for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Savor the moment. Um, appreciate all your comments. Write them down below and I'll see you in a future video.